The color management settings define how colors appear on your screen, as well as how they translate to print. A basic understanding of color management will make it easier to get your prints to look the way you intended. Let's go to Canvas Color Management Settings. Color management settings are going to define the color profile you'll be working with when you open artwork or create a new canvas. The dialog is divided into two sections. The topmost settings determine the default color profiles for new documents. Any artwork you create after choosing a default will utilize that color profile. The lower section is Color Profile Policies. This contains settings that determine what happens when you open an image that uses a different color profile than your chosen default. Let's start by choosing the defaults for new documents. Within the resource files for this course, there is a PDF that will show you how to download and install the Adobe RGB color profile. This is a free color profile made by Adobe, but it also works with Corel Painter and other art applications. Without getting too technical, Adobe RGB is a larger color range or gamut than sRGB, which is the default color profile in Painter. You can see the difference in color coverage in this diagram. In layman's terms, you can pick any color from your color picker, but the full color range may not be available to you if you're working in sRGB. By selecting Adobe RGB as your color profile, the number of colors that can be displayed in your image will be increased. And if your display supports an extended color range, the color you see will be more accurate, allowing you to paint with colors in that extended range. First, you'll need to download the Adobe RGB installer file. Next, close Corel Painter and install the Adobe RGB color profile. After installation, open Corel Painter and then return to the color management settings. Currently, the default color profile is set to sRGB, but let's go ahead and change it to Adobe RGB. The list is sorted alphabetically, so look for it up near the top. Next is the default CMYK conversion profile, which controls how CMYK colors are converted to RGB in Painter. Unless you know what you're doing, just leave this set at its default setting. Because color is created differently on a display than it is in print, the color in an image will likely be somewhat augmented when you print it. For example, a bright neon green might look amazing on your display, but might appear more subdued when printed on paper. For this reason, there is an advantage to creating your artwork with a wider color profile, because it may convert more accurately to the color profiles used for printing. Next, let's discuss color proofing. Color proofing can be useful when you're printing your artwork, because it helps you preview how your artwork will look when it's translated into different color profiles. I'll go to Canvas, Color Proofing Settings, and here's how we can choose the device we want to simulate. For example, US Web Coded Swap 2 will simulate a CMYK color conversion for printing. This artwork is currently using an Adobe RGB color profile. I'll check the box to turn on color proofing mode so that it is enabled once I exit this panel. And then the rendering intent will give you different methods for translating colors between devices. I'll set it to perceptual. Once I click on OK, this is a simulation of what our artwork will look like in CMYK. From the Canvas menu, I can turn color proofing mode on and off to preview the change. It's not a subtle change. A lot of the colors got duller and the image became darker and flatter overall. This isn't exactly what the artwork will look like when you print it, but it does give you an indication of which colors will be the most affected by the conversion. Your digital artwork is always going to look more vibrant on a computer display because a screen is projecting light into your eyes, whereas when you print something, the colors are created by the absorption of light. No matter what you do, your digital art is never going to look as bright in print as it does on your monitor. Furthermore, the color gamut is a lot smaller for printed artwork compared to digital artwork. This difference is especially noticeable in the blue and green ranges. You can see that my blues and greens took a pretty big hit after being converted to CMYK. With color proofing mode active, I can make changes and evaluate how they might affect the conversion. Do keep in mind that proofing color on your monitor is only as reliable as the color accuracy of your monitor. Unless you have an accurate monitor, you may not be seeing the true colors in the conversion. There's really no substitute for printing one copy of your artwork to see how it looks before you commit to printing more copies. A hard proof will allow you to see what sort of changes really need to be made, and you can compare it to what you see on your screen. I find that adjusting images for printing is easier to do in Photoshop, so I will save as a PSD make some changes in Photoshop, and then bring it back into Painter if I need to keep painting on it. I'll turn off color proofing mode and revert the template. 
Let's return to color management settings, and we'll take a look at color profile policies. When we open an image that uses a color profile that is different from the default we chose, we have the option of using the profile that is embedded in the image, or we can convert the color of the image to match our default RGB profile. Generally speaking, you'd probably want to use the embedded color profile, because converting the color profile will likely augment the colors, sometimes for the worse. When in doubt, it doesn't hurt to convert the color profile and see if it harmed the image. If not, then save a copy so you don't overwrite your original. Anytime there is a profile mismatch, you can choose to receive a warning message with color conversion options. If a color profile is missing, you can have it pop up a warning message about that too. By leaving these options disabled, the conversion options you chose as your defaults will be automatically applied. Next is color engine. We can't really change this to anything else, so let's move on. Rendering intent controls the method used to convert colors between profiles. We have perceptual, saturation, relative colorimetric, and absolute colorimetric. Perceptual is best for a variety of images, especially artwork and photographs. If you're working with a lot of text and simple graphics with solid colors, you might choose saturation. And relative colorimetric and absolute colorimetric are ideal for producing proofs. Unless you know what you're doing, it's fine to leave this set to perceptual. If one set of color management settings is not enough, you may want to create presets. You can do that with the controls at the top of the color management settings dialog. Color management is an in-depth topic that requires a lengthy explanation. If you want to learn more about it, I'll refer you to a reference video you can watch. I like my default RGB profile to be Adobe RGB, but everything else can remain the same. Let's click on OK to apply all of those changes. Next, we'll go to the Canvas menu, and below Color Management Settings, we can assign a color profile. For instance, if we opened an image without a profile, we could assign one. Or if we have an image that already has a color profile, but we want to convert it, we could convert to a profile as well. Let's try to convert to a profile and see what happens. The embedded color profile of this image is Adobe RGB, but I'm going to change that to sRGB, which is the Corel Painter default. If you want, you can modify the rendering intent, but I'm going to leave it set at perceptual. Flatten image will flatten all of the layers in your image. If your image has layers, you definitely want to uncheck that. In this case, it doesn't matter if I flatten the image. Let's click on OK. And now the color profile has been converted from Adobe RGB to sRGB. You may not notice a difference until you look closely. How much the color changes depends on the colors in the artwork and the profiles involved in the conversion. In the case of this conversion, there wasn't much of a change because the embedded Adobe RGB color gamut is larger than the sRGB color gamut I converted to. So all that needed to happen was to throw some color information away. Similar to how resolution works in your image, color information is also kind of a one-way street. If you start with more color depth, it's okay to remove some to end up with less. But if you start with fewer colors and try to add more, it just doesn't work because the computer can't add color detail that's not already there. Let's try a more extreme example of a color profile change. I'll revert this image to make sure that I don't save that color profile change. And let's do a quick side-by-side -side comparison to see the difference that a more drastic color profile change can make. I'll make a copy of this image and convert the color profile to CIE RGB. If you look closely at the clouds in the converted version, the clouds are a little bit more brown and the colors are duller because a smaller color space is being used. The Adobe RGB version has a larger color gamut, so the clouds are more vibrant. Overall, the colors are more vivid and there is a wider range of oranges. I recommend saving a copy of your artwork anytime you create a color conversion because you may not want to throw away the color information that was in your original. Furthermore, you should set your color management default as Adobe RGB before you start creating a bunch of paintings. That way, all of the artwork you create will have a wide color gamut to begin with. In my experience, I can print from Adobe RGB and get nice looking prints without a lot of adjustments. In addition to printing, color conversion also has an effect on artwork you post to the web. Unfortunately, many monitors and other types of displays are only capable of displaying a percentage of sRGB color. So the expanded color range you gain from using Adobe RGB will go unappreciated by most people viewing your artwork. As I mentioned earlier, the display that you are working on must be very color accurate to even see the full Adobe RGB color range. I am working on a Cintiq 27 QHD, which covers nearly 100% of Adobe RGB. You may be viewing this video on a display that only supports a smaller range of colors, 
so you are likely seeing color expressed differently than I am. Add to that the compression I used to make this video smaller, and you can begin to see that color accuracy quickly goes out the window when you're displaying your work on the web. Nevertheless, it's still worth using Adobe RGB as your default profile because you never know when you might want to print your work in the future. If you want to get a better idea of how your artwork will look on most devices, you can convert your profile to sRGB before saving to the web. Once you've made a change to your color profile defaults, that's considered to be workspace customization. Unfortunately, the color profile doesn't seem to be captured when you save your workspace, so you'll have to remember to set Adobe RGB as your default anytime you reset your workspace or reinstall Corel Painter. The color profile of a document will also be reset anytime Corel Painter crashes, so be sure to set it back to Adobe RGB whenever that happens. Fortunately, in the new Canvas dialog, you can see the selected color profile in the bottom right. You can use this to verify that you've selected the correct profile or to override your default color profile if you like. 